Today I'm going to tell you the story of how the song Riding with Private Malone was born. Now back in 1996, I got a job at the Opryland Hotel and Convention Center in Nashville. I worked in the audiovisual department out there. And it was a good job because it was really flexible and I could have days off during the week and write songs with people and go to Music Row and stuff like that. And eventually, in 1998, I ended up signing my first publishing deal. So I went to work writing songs on Music Row full time in 1998 and my contract was for two years and I was able to leave the Opryland Hotel and Convention Center far behind. Well, at the end of two years, I hadn't written any hit songs or got anything recorded, so they had to let me go. So I went back to the Opryland Hotel and Convention Center to ask if I could get my old job back. And they said, yeah, come on, we like you. You can come on back here. And the guy that I had written for said, you know, if you want to, I can't pay you anymore, but you can uh, use the basement office it, whenever you have a day off try to write some songs. So I was bummed out because I was back at my day job, not where I wanted to be, and trying to write some songs and stuff. And one day I was over there at the office and he said, you know, I want to challenge you. I want you to write a song that only you care about. Don't try to write a hit. Just write something that you care about. So I went down to the basement and I thought, okay, write a song that only I care about. Well, I thought, I've always wanted to write a song about an old car. I had heard this story many times about people finding cars for sale in barns really cheap, you know, like in the classified ads or something like that. And I'm a huge old car fan. I've always wanted to find a car like that. Um, so I thought that's a good place to start, but where do you go from there? And I remember sitting there that day in the basement and it hit me. I remember reading this story in the Reader's Digest about this guy that bought a used car and thought it was haunted because the radio station would always be on the wrong station when he would get back in the car and he just kind of felt like this presence of a, somebody in the car with him. So that's all I had and I remember thinking something about like you'll never be riding alone and I think I might have even come up with the title you'll never you'll be riding with Private Malone that day. So several months went by and I just left it in my notebook and didn't do anything with it but I knew I was gonna write it eventually. So at this point, I'm back at my day job. I've lost my gig on Music Row, although I still had an open door there. And didn't have much going on career-wise. But one day, I was looking in the Music Row facts, and I saw a little blurb that said, If you are an unsigned artist, and you'd like to be on the radio, send us your music to this show called Opry Star Spotlight. So Opry Star Spotlight was on WSM Radio 650, the home of the Grand Ole Opry. So I sent them my second CD that I had done called Could Be Worse. This was around 2000. And the producer of the show is named K.K. Wilson. And she called me and she said, Oh, we love you. We want to have you on. Can you be on tonight or in a couple of days? And I said, Well, I kind of want to let people know and have a little lead time. So I went on Opry Star Spotlight and K.K. introduced me to the host, Matthew Gillen. And we hit it off immediately. They were both huge fans of mine and they said we really like your music we want to have you on this show at least once a month whenever we can the door is open and now typically when you go and do a radio interview and you're the new guy you know they'll have you on for a minute you might get to play one song and then you're out the door and that's what I expected was gonna happen that night well I went in there and Matthew said play me a song and they said oh, that's good play me another song play me another song I think I was on the show for a whole hour now this is like on WSM the station that the Grand Ole Opry is on Opry Star Spotlight is actually the show that comes on after the Friday night Grand Ole Opry and I was on there for an hour so one Friday night I'm sitting at home and my buddy Jeff Batson calls me and he's over there at the WSM studios which coincidentally we're at the Opera Land Hotel and Convention Center and he called me and he said hey man David Ball is over here, the guy that sang Thinking Problem. Him and the songwriter, Wood Newton, are here on Opry Star Spotlight. You should come over. And I had just been on the show the week before, and I thought, well, I don't really want to wear out my welcome. And he said, no, man, you got to come over here. you got to meet these guys. They're great. So I drove on over to the Opryland Hotel and Convention Center, which is just a couple minutes away from my house in Donaldson, outside Nashville. And uh, I went on the show, and I met 
Wood Newton and David Ball and of course Matthew Gillen and KK they had to have me on and do a few songs and the cool thing about that show is even when they had somebody on that was like really famous they would treat the new guys equally so David Ball would do a song I would do a song and we got to take turns and then that that way they they got to hear what I was doing so I remember at the end of that night uh, Wood Newton said I like your songs Tom because they're country but they're not dumb now around the same time I had gone home to visit my dad in Virginia and while I was there visiting him I said hey you know we should go by and see my old boss Bill Madigan I haven't seen him in a long time he was a guy that I worked for when I was in high school my senior year he had a picture framing business in his house and I would frame pictures and stuff and uh, that was kind of my part-time gig during high school and uh, we would listen to country music on the radio all day while I was working and uh, that's really where I fell in love with it. I mean, I always liked it, but listening to it all day long, I just fell in love. Anyway, so years and years and years later, I go home to visit my dad. I said, let's go see Bill, see what's going on with Bill. So we dropped by his house, and I said, hey, Bill, what'd you ever do with that old car I sold you? I had sold Bill Madigan my 64 Chevrolet station wagon. It was my first car. I know it's a station wagon. It's a dorky car. But I loved it. It was our family car. I grew up with that car. That car meant a lot to me. Bill said, oh, I still got it. It's down behind the barn. And I said, really, can we go look at it? He said, yeah, let's go check it out. So we went down there and I walked around the corner of the barn and my car was all faded. It was missing a hubcap. The window, one window was out of it. It had leaves in it. I think the air filter and stuff was in the back seat. It looked pretty sad. I mean, when I sold it to him, it was pretty shiny. It looked pretty good. It was in good shape. My dad and I had fixed it up. We had repainted it, and it was in, you know, it was in pretty good condition. But that day, it was like walking around the corner of the barn and seeing a loved one laying there on the ground decomposing. It was pretty sad. My, I mean, my dad repainted this car two or three times and rebuilt the engine. I think he rebuilt the engine in like 84, 85. Well, I drove so, I mean, it for it a in, year or so, you know, and it yeah. did fine until I went to have it inspected. Yeah, and they wouldn't pass the inspection because it had too many holes in the well, this frame time. underneath. Yeah, I had thoughts when we came over here last time. I had thoughts of thinking, you know, if it's not in too bad a shape, maybe I could come back and get it one day and fix it up. And But I think it's getting to the point of being a little too far gone. <laughs> so I thought... I wonder if I left anything in this car because I just sold it to him as is. I think I sold it to him for like four or five hundred bucks. And so I opened up the glove box and I looked in there and there was all my, you know, paperwork and crap from high school. And my dad had kept this little Rite Aid notebook in there and this little black leather bound book that looked like a little diary. And that's where he kept his maintenance logs and you know when he changed the filter and his mileage and all that kind of thing and I thought oh man what if this was a diary what if this was my dad's diary oh that'd be so cool but there was nothing juicy in there just you know mathematical calculations and stuff I got my dad's mileage notebook out of the um, dashboard when I was here last time and I think that might have been part of the inspiration you know for the note you know for the note uh -huh. in the song Private Malone yeah it hit me sitting on that front seat. What if this was a letter or a diary from a guy that owned this car in 64? And what if it wasn't a dorky station wagon, but what if it was like a cool car, like a Corvette? And what if this guy has been drafted and this is his dream car and he's got a feeling that he might not be coming back home to it? All of that came back to me sitting on the front seat that day and I thought I could put that in the haunted car that the guy finds in the barn song. So, I went home, jotted down a few more notes, and let it sit a while. So, Wood Newton and I got together that day on Music Row to try to write a song. And typically, when you're meeting with someone that's a hit songwriter and you're the new guy, you kind of pitch them your ideas, and, you know, hopefully something sticks. But it's usually the, the new writer's job to sort of bring the ideas, since the hit writer, you know, can he can write a hit song. He doesn't need you to write a hit song. He can write a hit song. So... I pitched probably four or five ideas to Wood Newton and none of them were sticking. And we were at that awkward part of the co-write where he was saying, well, maybe we should just go to lunch or something, you know, and uh, we'll get together another day, which doesn't happen. It's like trying to get a second date if you don't deliver on the first date. <laughs>
Anyway, so I was thumbing through my little spiral notebook and I came across the page with the Riding with Private Malone idea and I said, before we go to lunch, I got an idea I'd like to run by you. So I had the beginning of the song and the middle and I had the title, but I didn't have a melody and I didn't really have hardly any lyrics fleshed out at all. I told Wood the idea and he said, oh my God, I can't believe you told me that idea. He said, my cousin Jeff had a Corvette and he went to Vietnam. And I said, well, did he, did he make it back? He said, yeah, he made it back, but he died in a car wreck less than 24 hours from when he got home. So he had cheated death numerous times in Vietnam only to come home and, and die in a senseless car wreck 24 hours from when he got back. Wood kind of had a tear in his eye. He said, man, I can't believe you, you ran this idea by me. He said, that's what we're writing. We are writing this song. So I don't think we got much done that first day other than talking about the idea. Second time we got together, we talked about the idea some more and Wood said, maybe we should go to the library and get a book about Corvettes so we can know which one we're talking about as we're writing about it. So we drove over to the Green Hills Library and got this one of those big coffee table books about Corvettes and uh, we picked out this silver 66 Corvette convertible with the turbine wheels and uh, we're like, yeah, that's the one. That's the one we're going to write about. And then I believe we got together maybe a couple of more times to write the song. But it was kind of unusual because this song, we wrote all the lyrics really without any melody to it. Typically when I write a song, it pretty much goes hand in hand. It's lyrics and melody together. But for this song, we just kind of wrote out all the lyrics and then we had to put a melody to it. So if you look at the song Writing with Private Malone, it's really not a symmetrical song. Um, and what I mean is, the verses aren't exactly the same, the chords don't change in the same spots, and there's sections in it that don't repeat. It's kind of an unusual song, structure-wise, but rarely has anyone ever mentioned that to me, because the story is what is so important in that song. So it took Wood Newton and I about three or four sessions of getting together to get the song all completed, and in the next video, I'm going to tell you how David Ball heard the song, and how it got recorded and how it became a number one hit. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Please hit the like button, leave me a comment below, and stay tuned for the next chapter, How Riding with Private Malone Got Recorded and Became a Hit. I was just out of the service, thumbing through the classifieds, when an ad that said, Old Chevy, somehow caught my eye.